Hi, and welcome to Off the Shelf. I am your host, Miss Victoria, and today I have Avian. Hi. And we're kind of kicking off. We're going to do it, uh, our summer reading, which is called Tales for Tales. So our first Off the Shelf is going to be talking about books that have tales, and of course, that are also tales. Uh, we will give you more information on the summer reading at the end when we get to the end of this. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into all these books are going to be books that have tales on it, whether it's cats, dogs, any kind of animal, dragon, as long as it has a tail, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So the first one I know we're going to like, and we mentioned this one before, I'm a big fan of this one, and I'm hoping to get some more of the volumes, is going to be, let me get it in anticipation here, Peace Stars, and this is the latest volume, we, one of the latest one I think we have is volume nine, uh, I'm in the process of getting 10, 11, and I think this is 12 one, I don't know. And this one, of course, uh, all about animals that go to a school. Somewhat, right? Yeah, they go to school. It's go to- like animal society. And it's kind yeah. of like Zootopia. So if you like Zootopia for children, Beastars takes that and it it's, it's really cool. It turns it into kind of like a dark adult like societal commentary that is true very good i, I would agree on that comparison on that and because b starts it does i mean it gives you stuff that you would think is like a normal like it's not so much um there is beast but the whole type b star is a, a title i guess at the school but we mentioned it before and they all the animals are in here so that's we chose this one for tales for tales and it has a great storyline because each character, if you look on the volume, if they have a character, usually that volume is going to focus on that character, yeah. uh, or at least they're mentioned in that volume. So this one is the new, newest character that they just added uh, on this volume. I think he came out in volume eight, I think also. It was introduced in eight. Uh, but it's a great one if you want to try something different, like she said, a different version of the, like Zootopia, because it's going to be an animal society um, this is great for teens and adults, but of course, on the content, be careful as always when it comes to these. Uh, this is one of our mangas in a YA, but of course, uh, parents, make sure you always check the content. Uh, you might want to look at it first. Uh, if not, I'm more than sure your child's probably seen it on Netflix because there is actually the anime of it, which of course, me and Avian agree has the best opening. So good. So yeah, if you're watching it, please watch the opening. Don't skip the intro. Um, it's, it's worth it to watch it at least once or twice. Definitely. Okay. <clears throat> Next one is an author. And we're going to come back to this guy. His name's Patrick Ness. Uh, this one's Burn. And you can see the reason I picked it was a tail was because this one's a dragon. And you can see the tail there. It says, how does the world end? It ends in fire. So this is dealing with one of those like apocalyptic and you know, apocalypse kind of stories. I uh, never sure. read it. I don't think I've read Patrick Ness. Uh, so much so if you want something different and you like dragons you want a different YA I would give Patrick Ness a chance um, especially this one because the cover alone kind of grabs your attention to be honest yeah it's really cool I like it and the world is ending but there's dragons that's that's how I want to go out I go I I pray that's I pray that's what's bringing the fire I would assume it's the dragons (laughs) And of course, I know the first two were YA, so I had to bring in an adult one. So we have Rita Mae Brown, and this one's Out of Hound. She tends to do like these quirky kind of mystery or fiction books. Um, I want to say most of them are mystery, uh, but it's interesting because typically when people go hunting, uh, they have hounds, but they're actually hunting the foxes. But in this one, um, Out of Hounds, apparently the fox is the per- <laughs> is the one that's using the hounds, I guess, just to cover them. Okay. Kind of intrigues me. I don't know about you, but I mean. Yeah, I love the fox in like the human outfit. Very interesting. Yeah, she's like very dressed with her nice dress, a coat, jacket, top mm-hmm. hat. I'm curious. I don't read too much adults, uh, but this one is that uh, kind of grabs my attention. I don't know if it's the red fox or the hounds, but it caught my attention. All of it. <laughs> all of it. All the above. All the above on that one. All right. Last one caught my attention because I love dealing with werewolves or wolves in general. 
And this is an interesting one. I never heard of this author, Alexandra Ross, let alone um, a different way of spelling Alexandra. Uh, it's called Don't Call the Wolf. And it kind of seems like almost very tellish. Uh, you can see that top almost seems like either a dragon or a Dracula kind of type there, winding yeah. road. The two could different be. types of, yeah, the black one on that side, which is the wolves, which could be one family versus another family. Okay. In the collision. And it's in the young adults, one of our well, newest ones to us, to the library that we have. Uh, so if you, the cover alone, if you're a type of person that, when you see a book, the cover is what catches your attention. Yeah. This seems like one that's going to catch my attention because I'm seeing the woods. I'm seeing a winding road. I'm seeing a castle on this side. I'm seeing the two. This one looks like a cat almost because of the ears and you have the wolves. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Very like, cool. what's going on? Is it a feud? Mm, maybe. Different factions, different sides. Could be. Now, remember, cool. all these four are here at Garcia. We have them in our collection. Uh, if it's not on our shelf, of course, you can check them, uh, put them on hold and pick them up either curbside or come into the library to uh, check them out. Now, Hoopla, we have a couple different ones. Uh, the first one is the Panda of Death. I just like the fact that it's a red panda. I'll be quite honest. Uh, but it is a zoo mystery, so there is a series for this one. And I think is a uh, this panda was just born at the zoo. Oh, it's so cute. And um, I think something happens either to the, the zookeepers or something happens at the time the fact that, that this panda was they try, I think they're trying to kill it, maybe. I don't know. But I know it's this is centering around the birth of this uh, young baby red panda. That was born at the zoo. I, I would read it. For you sure. would read it? Oh, yeah, it I like Red Panda. I mean, I like and the it's cover. To be honest, the cover is really catching my attention. Um, next one is Lindsay's Hooper's Happy, uh, Hemingway's Cats. And it is uh, actually about the cats that him, the real cats that were at Hemingway's house in the Florida Keys. And that actually looks close, I think, almost uh, like the house that Hemingway lived in. And, of course, if you all don't know who him, what I mean by Hemingway, I mean Ernest Hemingway, uh, who wrote for the Whom the Bell Tolls and mm -hmm. many other ones. Of course, the short stories are actually really great. Some of them, I feel like, are better than the novels. I prefer the short stories. But this one's about the cats and, of course, other forces of nature that happened while he was there. And Amelia uh, by John Batiste is, is a mystery. And it, and it kind of reminds me, honestly, of Orson Welles' Animal Farm. Yeah, the cover that, looks That like really grabbed my attention. Um, you can find out more description of it on Hoopla. Just type in Animalia and it'll give you a little more details on it. But I actually picked this one for the fact that it does remind me so much of um, Animal Farm. I think it's... I want to say it might be a, a version, a different version of Animal Farm. Okay. That makes sense. Because it reminds me so much of it. That's why I kind of chose it. And plus it's just yeah. tails. Remember, all these books have animals with tails on it. <laughs> the next one, however. It's not a real animal. It's not an animal. The Oyster Thief is actually about a mermaid. Uh, this yeah. one I actually do remember uh, the summary about. It's a mermaid who's... I think her, the person she's engaged to or betrothed to or whatever, um, he gets sick by some poisoning that's in the water or something that happens to them. So she has to go to the surface to find a cure and bring it back to what she is. So, and then at the same time on land, there's a man, there's a sailor, somebody who also is Either it's against mermaids or doesn't believe in them, but there's something going on with him. So it's going to go from back and forth, but the focus is on the mermaid and trying to save her colony or her, you know, her betrothed and, of course, her family because they're being poisoned with whatever's in the water. So it's a different tale. It's a mermaid tale, so I did throw, throw a little wrench in there. Access 360. Uh, everybody knows David Rosenfeld. I've never read him, but he's a very popular one. 
Uh, this is part of his Andy Carpenter mystery series. It's Bark of Night. And I thought, hey, I did a couple of cats. I might so as well throw in a dog. Yeah, dog mystery. I like it. And you got me. That's a cute dog. It is so cute. There's a dog. You can just you. get lost in those eyes. Adorable. Second one, of course, everybody should know this one. Fantastic. J.K. Beasts. Rowling's Fantastic Beasts them. and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. And I chose them one one because there are little a lot of mystical, mythical animals or creatures. Yeah, so it's different from the movie, right? Like it, this is a shorter book than all the Harry Potter books. And it is shorter it's, than all the other Harry Potter, but this one's it is pretty much a journal that he had wrote yes, of the different beasts that actually Harry and all of them use the book when they're in school. Because awesome. uh, this one, the movie came out later, but it's actually way before Harry Potter and Hermione and everybody go to Hogwarts. This is before, because they use this as a textbook um, because he was researching these beasts. And of course, um, Dumbledore comes out in it, but it's a young version of Dumbledore mm-hmm. because he's a teacher, at the t- professor at the time. He is not headmaster like he is when Harry gets there. And of course, my favorite character is Yaoi, which is a giant cat. He's like a Chinese, like the dragon mixed with cat. It's, it's adorable. I mean, he likes a little rattle, like, a little, like cats like it. So if you haven't seen the movie, you got to see the first one to see the Yaoi because he is so adorable. It's one of my favorites. And of course, if you had to throw in a picture book, throw in the children's one, everybody knows this one. Skippity John Jones, and this one's And the Big Bones by Julius Gansner. Now, this one, I, I read this as a teacher to my students. I thought it was the most adorable book because it's a Siamese cat. You can tell by the coating because there's a white and the black ears. It was typical of Siamese cats. But his ears are so big in his head that he actually, or he or she, I don't, Honestly, I don't know if they put a specific if it's a male or female dog, but the cat wants to be a chihuahua. Oh, so, so that- it doesn't say if it's a male or female cat, which I should have said, uh, but it wants to be a chihuahua. So it wants to be a dog because if you look at it, it does look like a chihuahua. Typically, yeah. they, chihuahuas have big head, apple heads and the big ears, but it's a Siamese cat. <laughs> he wants to be a chihuahua. Uh, this is also a good one if you want your kids to learn a little bit of Spanish because Skippy John Jones has a lot of Spanish, a couple of Spanish words within it. I know I had a field day trying to read it when I was a school librarian for pre-K and kinder because um, <laughs> I was kind of trying my best, I'll be honest, to say the word. It might not come out right, but it was always funny when the little kids will say it for me. So the next time they came and we would read one, I said, you know, I have trouble. I would tell the kids and they're like, it's OK, miss, we'll read it for you. So they would, they would jump in themselves and read the Spanish words. It was it's adorable. And to finish off, we have another Patrick Ness. This one's called And the Ocean Was Our Sky. If you read classic stories like an adult, you would know what this one is a remake, what book this is a remake of. Or uh, an adaptation, I should say, of a different book. Any hints? Big. I see a whale. It's white. So, uh, is it Moby Dick? There you go. Congrats oh, on that one. Amen. I was like, I see a whale. <laughs> yes, it is a remake of, a, I, don't see, I guess you could say, of Moby Dick. As a young adult book, so it is a different version of it. And it gives a different telling from a different side, so. This is as an interesting one, I thought. All right. So let's go ahead and remember to visit our Facebook and YouTube channel, of course, the Corpus Christi Public Libraries. Uh, if you haven't already, like the Facebook page and subscribe to the channel so you can see more of these videos of Off the Shelf. And of course, uh, you can also go to our website, cctexas.com slash library and virtual programs. You can see it in there. Also, if you need help finding books, you can call us at that number. Go to the our website. You can use new booklet, author check, and book newsletter. There's a longer version right there of the online programming website. Now, like I said, before we finish and everything, I know I'll give you all these books. 
couple of things we want to go over. I don't see, I don't think we have one with us. Uh, did you grab the Bookopoly? Oh, I did not get Bookopoly. I only got the summer reading. Okay. Well, um, while well, Avi is going to talk, we're, we're going to go ahead and go into our summer reading. And Avi's going to show you the, the board. Now, for summer reading, you can yeah. register our parents at any of the branches. Avian's holding up the kids uh, reading challenge card. And on there, you'll put their name, your phone number, and of course, the home library. And of course, it says at the top, for every five books you check out, it's not a reading log, so we not, you don't have to write the, how many books they read or what the titles are. It's just when you come up to the desk and check out, when you get five books, you're going to get a stamp in one of those squares. Very good. And of course, once you get all five stamps across, because you're going by the row, once you complete a row, you will get a prize. And just like Amy is showing, every row you will get a prize until you get to the last one. When you complete the card, you bring it into any of the branches, and it will be in your child will be in into a raffle for a larger prize at the end of summer reading. When they will get a second card. Once they complete that card, same thing, they can get a prize per row. Now, once they get to the third card, however, they will just be going for just entries into the raffle. Teens are a little different, parents. Uh, we don't have them, but it's the same card form. It's just going to look different. It's going to be red, uh, lettering well. instead. But it also says the teens, for every one book they check out, they get a stamp. So that's a little different because the teens, they have... They have the books are a little different wise uh, than uh, children. So that's why we went for one book. Now, as for adults, if you are interested, we do have an adult program as well. It's called Bookopoly. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you that card uh, next time. But if you did our ones from last year, it's the same. But the content on the board is different because it goes to our theme, which is Tales for Tales. So you are interested, you can actually this time register at any of the branches for Bookopoly. So Bookopoly has expanded, everybody. So you can actually get it at any, register at any of the six branches besides us. Uh, but if we are closest to you, by all means, please come in and register here and we'll give you your board and your chance cards and you'll be set to do the Bookopoly. I hope you do sign up for some reading. And I hope adults, I hope you sign up for Bookopoly. And not only the kids, you can join in in the summer reading program. Yep. And as always, we will see you next time with our theme. We're going to be going uh, focusing on uh, Pride because it is Pride Month. So we are going to give you some suggestions on that as well. And look forward, everybody, to our Father's Day uh, off the shelf as well. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.